Have you ever thought about how fantastic the mascots for Rice Krispies are? <laughs> Sav, Crackle, and Pop, my boys. I am a big fan of, I believe it's Crackle, and he's the middle one. He's the blue shirt one with the cool little beanie looking thing. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say at the beginning of this video. Hello everybody, this is another good old fashioned FVI. Today we're going to be talking about four different volumes across four different demographics, across four different genres. It is going to be a weird one. Uh, there wasn't a lot of horror stuff that was releasing um, in the month of October, which is kind of surprising, or any that I could get my hands on in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm going to try my best. Um, <laughs> To, to talk about the horror series the most, uh, and obviously, you know, still give uh, content and information about some of the other ones, but yeah, definitely going to be focusing a lot on that horror one. There's only one <laughs> out of the four, uh, but it's going to be interesting at the end of this video to see who gets my, um, the manga of the month. So yeah, let's get started right now. All right, let's get started with the first volume, and that is going to be a really unique one, actually. Um, so, it originally released, of course, in October 2023 uh, from Viz Media, and it is a very interesting um, collaboration slash, like, compilation manga. So, let's get showing off. It is B Twixt. Um, so, there's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to have to talk about in this one, because just because it's, like, a very interesting... Thing. Uh, and it's also going to be a little bit different than what I typically do for an FBI because there are six short stories. I'm going to be talking um, individually for the most part about each of them. Uh, less, less more focused on like telling telling all the story just because I want to keep some of like the um, surprise about each of the stories so you can read it and enjoy yourself. Anyways. I'm talking too much. <laughs> Let's talk about the good old fashioned cover and spine. This is a awesome cover and spine, super cool. Um, there's really nice like flip flop between the sides. Uh, please note that actually you will be reading from both directions and I will get more into that as I talk about this. But uh, yeah, overall really flipping cool uh, cover and spine. Uh, Junji Ito's work, obviously, I enjoy quite a bit, but it's important to note that Junji Ito actually does not have a story in this at all. Let me tell you about the <laughs> many different artists, uh, very accomplished authors and uh, artists and just illustrators in general. So, I'm going to start with the first one on the Japanese side, so um, it's important to note that the stories are split between... Uh, like basically like the a Western style, so you're going to be reading from left to right versus the uh, Japanese Eastern style, which is uh, right to left. Um, so the first couple of stories on the yeah the Japanese side, we have Ryo Hanada, who is um, known for making Devil's Line and Blackguard. We have Aki Shimizu, which is the author of Kwan and the Su Sweet Coden Three manga uh, adaptation from Tokyo Pop. I don't know if it's ever been re-released. I don't think so. And uh, Shima Shinya, who I've talked about in a variety of these and is currently one of my favorite publishing authors. Um, they released Lost Lad London and Glitch 3 End Press. So um, we have their three stories on the Japanese side. And then on the uh, left to right side, we have ourselves Michael W. Conrad, who is known for writing things like Batgirls and uh, Wonder Woman, as well as Becky Cloonan, who is uh, one of my favorite uh, American artists. Um, she's done work for Batman, for Batgirls, Gotham Academy is what I know her for. Um, yeah, she has a crazy amount of work, but awesome to see them in there. Uh, then we have Sloane Long, I think is how you pronounce her name. I'm sorry, I didn't, I should have looked that up, but... Um, they have worked on a series called A Map to the Sun and Graven Eye, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And then Leslie Hung, who I know for Snot Girl, um, you know, really popular series that's currently releasing. And then Hua Hua Zhu, uh, who is an, uh, an accomplished illustrator. Uh, so it's super awesome. We get a lot of interesting mix of different artists and creators. Uh, I'm going to talk about each of the stories now individually. Um, <laughs> so. First up, we have ourselves, um, I believe it's called Kame, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, but basically the story is uh, follows like this dude who wakes up in uh, the middle of a like kind of like lake or some kind of like water uh, and he sees a girl there and yeah, it's about their discussion and conversation. Um, yeah, out of all the stories, I would say this one is probably the most sad. Um, it is, I would say it's the least creepy out of the six of them. Um, it is Ryo Hanada's story and I think the art is also pretty good. Uh, I'm not like the biggest fan of Rihanna's art style. It's just not my kind of thing. Uh, but I can see like why people enjoy it. Um, there are some creepy factors with the story, but for the most part, it is more of like a sad, like, um, kind of like comeuppance kind of story in a way. Uh, <laughs> you'll just have to check it out. 
Second up, we have the film Ephemera. So this is the Aki Shimizu story. Um, this one is about this dude who goes to watch a really creepy movie and how he's affected by it and how it affects him um, into his uh, upcoming life, basically. And yeah, that one is creepy. <laughs> out, of, out of all six stories, uh, that one is one of the creepiest. It's one of the ones that really got my, like, got goosebumps building. Ugh, I'm getting like kind of goosebumps right now. Um, but yeah, that one is really creepy. Uh, there's like some pretty nasty looking monsters slash ghost designs. Um, overall, a very good story. I really like that one. And then we have The Window, and this is the uh, Shima... Shima Shinya story. This one is about a window uh, in this apartment complex that this dude lives at that you're never supposed to open. And um, let's just say that someone gets a little bit too curious to see why this window is not supposed to be open. Um, that one, I will say, is not as like scary per se. It is kind of like a little bit creepy. Uh, you build up suspense throughout the entire story. So um, overall, it's not my favorite actually out of the six, uh, but I do enjoy it. And of course, I'm always gonna enjoy Shima Shinya's art style. Now, flipping to the other side. So it's important to note that the uh, the comic will tell you like, oh, like this is when you can go read the American side. Um, so like this side will have all of the American stories or like the Western style uh, comics. So yeah, first up we have ourselves Never Left. This is the Michael W. Conrad and Becky Cloonan story. Uh, follows the story about these two men. Uh, one of them is out hunting slash, uh, I think he's fishing. I, can't, I, like, I don't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, another a friend of his shows up and has this conversation with him that will um, affect what happens later down in the story. It's really creepy um, and the art style is great. Uh, Becky Cloonan always killing it. Uh, very realistic, uh, not realistic, but like has a very specific like shading style that I really, really do enjoy. And this one is probably one of the creepier ones out of the six. Um, yeah, ugh, gets me, got me goosebumps. I'm <laughs> getting goosebumps again. Um, coming up next, we have Mirror Mirror. This is the Sloan Long and Leslie Hung story. Uh, follows the story about this girl who has, who finds this mirror basically. Uh, and the mirror like kind of has a double life for her. Uh, so <laughs> this one's also really creepy. Um, Definitely not super scary, but it's one of those ones where it's like what would happen if you had like a body double kind of thing um, Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's weird. It's odd. Uh, the art is great um, Yeah, really good story and then last but not least which is actually my favorite out of all of them is shadow And this is the Hua Zhu story uh, Follows a story about this person who finds a cat and tries to take care of it uh, But accidentally invites something that they probably should not have this one has probably the creepiest art uh, Has one of the scariest like moments in the entire volume I would say uh, and overall it's actually my favorite story out of all six yeah, that one is something else. <laughs> uh, I want to definitely give you the chance to go into it blind because it is just really creepy. Uh, really get your hair like raised. It's weird. It's bizarre. It's, I don't know, even like the like the normal parts, whatever you want to call it, are also really creepy. Just the way the people are drawn, it's just like, eh. I don't know, there's something about it that's just kind of gross and scary. Um, but overall, this is a fantastic horror manga anthology. anthology. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and of course, I'm like a big fan of a few of the artists that are in here, so I kind of had to pick it up regardless. Um, it's a really nice hardcover. It's definitely worth a pick up if you like horror stuff. Um, or if you like any of the artists regardless, I would say definitely give it a shot because the short stories are really quick. Uh, most of them are like... I want to say like 40, 50 pages, probably, uh, maybe a little bit shorter, but most of them are pretty fast reads. So yeah, this is a really, really great thing. I really enjoy this. I'm really happy we got it. I'm kind of excited to see if we get more of these kind of like manga anthologies uh, in the future, uh, especially from Viz Media. I think it'd be really cool. Okay, so our next volume is a re-release, actually. Uh, very interesting. This one's a very old series, uh, at least in comparison to everything else <laughs> around it. Uh, but first, originally published in 1990 in a magazine called South, which is a... Shin Shokan magazine. Um, yeah, this one is uh, one that a lot of people were really, really excited to have come back because it was originally released by Tokyo Pop in English and got an official October 2023 volume one release. It is Tokyo Babylon from the Clamp Premium Collection. Um, yeah, let's talk about this cover and spine. I love this thing. I like the simplicity. I love that it's super bright and red. It really stands out on a shelf. Um, I really like the design of the character that's on the front, which is the main character Subaru, uh, who I will be getting into as we talk about to the characters. But yeah, overall, this is like, this is one of those like simplicity is key. 
uh, kind of volumes. I'm not typically a big fan of these, but I think it's better if they use a color instead of just basic white. Uh, we do get a lot of white um, manga volumes and spines. It's never, not usually the most interesting thing, so it's really cool that we get one that's like a completely different color uh, and really pops out on the shelf. Um, I really, really, really enjoy this. Um, but yeah, let's get into some uh, background information. Translation is from Amanda Haley and lettering is from Phil Christie. Um, Let's get into our characters. So I'm only going to be talking about one of them, even though there's like three main characters, I would you would argue. But we're going to talk about the main character here. This is Subaru Sumeragi. He is the head of the clan um, of like, because of, of famous like Omniogis is what they're called. Basically, they're like spirit people. Um, I, I wrote down they're basically like exorcist is like the simplest way to put it, even though that is just one of the many things that an Omnioji would do in the past. Um, but yeah. Uh, he is hot-headed, he's very smart, um, kind of like, <laughs> not necessarily like hot-headed in the way that he gets mad at everything, but he does get flustered often, uh, which is really funny. <laughs> um, he is definitely bothered by his sister and his um, one-sided love interest is what I put it as, uh, who is this guy named, I believe his name is Seishiro? Um, yeah, Seishiro Sakurazuka. It is quite the long name, uh, but it's an older dude who is a veterinarian and always just says, oh, I love him so much, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so he's easily distracted by these people, but yeah, he's really good at his job um, and overall very like sympathetic and empathetic character towards uh, the ghosts that he has to deal with and the people that he works with. Um, so overall, I like him a lot. I think he's a really cool character. I like his design a lot, uh, which I will talk more about in the art. But going into the story, um, follows the characters Subaru uh, as well as his twin sister Hokuto and uh, like I said, the uh, love interest kind of um, Seishiro as they are basically trying to protect Tokyo from a variety of uh, spiritual and other worldly like evils and other things. So um, yeah, we get a couple of stories in this one. We don't like there's not a ton in the first volume, uh, but the stories that we do get are kind of interesting. We get to meet this uh, meet like a spooky girl kind of thing who is like currently possessing Tokyo Tower, uh, and we get like this kind of like mystery already built up where um, Subaru has this memory of somebody who's telling him something under a tree, and uh, he can't remember exactly who it is. And somebody basically comes out and says kind of the same thing that they heard from the past. So they're not sure if that is the same person or not. But yeah, the story has a nice mix of mystery, a nice mix of action, um, kind of thriller vibes as well. Um, overall, it's really fun. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I think the story is actually really cool. And I'm kind of excited to see where it goes um, as we proceed into the next volume. And talking about art, this is, I would say, what most people imagine clamp art to be. Um, it is very detailed, uh, highly stylized, uh, has like really fantastic action. Uh, I've never really read that much clamp stuff, I'm gonna be completely honest. Uh, I've only read uh, The Legend of... I forgot what that one's called. Uh, but that one's like a like Chinese mythological story that they did. Um, that was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't my favorite and uh, yeah, I thought it was decent. I recently read Angelic Lair as well, so I've kind of gotten used to like their art style. Uh, at least like the more of like the more of like the card catcher Sakura style, but this is the style that I usually think of when I think of Clamp, which is that more like heavily detailed, um, kind of dark story, dark art. Um, yeah, the action is really, really good. Um, I actually really was quite impressed with it. Um, a lot of the character designs are really awesome as well. The backgrounds are fantastic. They are great. They really pop out of the page. And um, yeah, we also get this fantastic color page at the beginning. Just this like super flipping cool. We get the twins here, and then you get a flip out page, and you see Sea Shadow uh, with beautiful colors. Absolutely wonderful. Yen Press really killed it with this release. Um, yeah, overall, I think this is a fantastic series, uh, or at least a fantastic volume. I think the characters are awesome. Uh, we get a lot of like fun story beats and for story elements elements as well. We get a mystery built up from the first volume, which I always appreciate, and we get some fantastic art from Clamp. So um, yeah, this is definitely a must pick up for me. I think this is definitely worth a pick up for sure, um, especially if you're a big fan of Clamp, and uh, even if you're not, I would say give it a cool, give it a shot. I think it's some pretty solid um, action that you can see. <laughs> All right, so the next volume that I'm going to be talking about is one that I would say a lot of people were really hyped about when it was uh, announced, mostly because it had an extremely successful anime that a lot of people memed the crap out of, and for for good reason. It is a very memeable series. Uh, but first releasing in Manga Time Kira, uh, Kirara Max in 2017, that is the manga Bochi the Rock from Aki Hamazi. Um, so let's get right into it. We have ourselves translation from John Neal. 
um, and lettering from Chiho Christie. So awesome. Really cool uh, spine and cover as well. I really love yellow and black. I think it's an awesome color combination. And this specific volume looks amazing. Um, and I don't know, I like, this one is really great. I think the we have a really nice font here on the left, as well as the font for the volume one. And I just really also like the kind of like drawn out Bochi the Rock um, Font? I don't even know if it's a font because technically it's like a it's like a writing style or whatever you want to call it, penmanship. Um, but overall, I really, 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 really like this spine as well. This was a really good month for awesome new spines. So let's talk about our characters. I'm only gonna be talking about one of them, even though there are four main characters. But Bochi is the one we follow the most. Uh, her actual name is Nitori Goto. Um, she is unbelievably introverted to the point where she's like just absolutely strange. Uh, she suffers from social anxiety, uh, so has a hard time trying to open up to people, but yeah, she is just kind of just really flipping weird, uh, <laughs> but uh, in a very charming way. I think she's all, like, she's really funny. Um, she's really passionate about playing guitar, which is awesome. I always like seeing like those kind of people who are very passionate about a certain hobby or a certain like interest, and yeah, she's like a really good guitarist, but yeah, she is currently struggling to make friends and stuff like that. I'm kind of going into the story because they kind of are like hand in hand in this point. Um, but yeah, so it's about Bochi basically joining the this band called is the Kesu, Kesoku band. Kesoku? I think that's how you I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. But basically, she gets recruited to become the guitarist for this band. Uh, even though she's super awkward, the band is kind of like a mix of like just like these kind of weird, just very strange people. Uh, a drummer who's very outgoing, a bassist who's kind of quiet and doesn't uh, just kind of just does things. She's like one of those cool, cool, calm, collected kind of people. Um, and then a singer who's very reluctant to be the singer. So overall, it's a uh, it's kind of a wacky story. Um, <laughs> it's told in four coma, which if you don't know, that is a four the four panel style comics where all the stories kind of take place in four panels. Um, Overall, I actually do like the story. I like where we go through this first volume. Uh, we get a lot of build up and a lot of like. <laughs> Uh, kind of growth between the characters and also with the band itself uh, as we move in uh, we get like a chance for them to take their first like band photo or whatever you call it which is just like a really funny scene the writing is hilarious I was laughing at so many different parts of this um, volume which I guess tells you that it's a really good comedy series it's a really good gag comedy <laughs> there are a lot of just really funny moments and overall it's yeah the story is great I really do like it and I also really do like the characters now not even talking about the art I'm gonna talk about the art now the art is good and I think it actually takes advantage of the four coma style uh, really well usually I'm not the biggest fan of four coma styles because I think it's very limiting in terms of like paneling styles and compositions that you can get with the backgrounds of characters uh, but I think Bochi does it really well uh, for the most part like we get a lot of information packed into it uh, the text is not completely overbearing we get a lot of characters like just doing weird stuff uh, so overall yeah I think it's done it's done really really well and I really like it I I really like this volume I could see why people were super hyped about it Bochi the Rock is a ton of fun and definitely a pickup if you're a big fan of Co uh, four coma stuff or a comedy series that's just really stupid really out there um i think it's pretty fun it has a music theme so of course i had to pick it up um i love music stuff so <laughs> uh yeah so bochi's rock is uh really great definitely give it a shot if you're a big fan of comedy stuff all right into our last series so this one is an interesting one so it originally released in gangan pixiv i believe is how you pronounce it it is a online magazine it originally published in july of 2019 and we've officially got it in english from square enix manga and that is the ice guy the ice guy and the cool girl from miyuki tonagaya i think that's how you pronounce it tonagaya tonagaya i think that's how you pronounce it I'm just kind of spitballing here. Um, but yeah, let's talk about people who worked on it. We have translator is Julie Gonowich. Um, lettering is by Liz Blakesy. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, cover designer by T. Collier. Uh, and editor is Sarah Tangney, I believe is how you pronounce it. Oh man, I probably should look up uh, how to pronounce these names before I say them. Anyways, um, let's talk about the cover and spine. Um, I've mentioned it before. I'm not always the biggest fan of a white spine and a white thing, but this one, it makes sense because it is about ice and snow. Um, and they do like mix it up with a nice blue color that helps like a lot of things pop out. And it's just, I don't know, it's a kind of a cute cover. Has your typical characters on the front. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's not too bad. Not my favorite out of the four, but it is still pretty good. 
Let's talk about our two characters because this one is worth talking about the two characters since they get a lot of screen time together. So we're going to start with our boy. His name is Himuro. He is a descendant of an ice god, basically. So uh, whenever he shows like heavy emotion, he is uh, will affect the weather around him is the best way to put it. Um, yeah, he's really quiet. He's uh, very shy, um, but really, really likes this girl um, like right from the get go. And he really appreciates nice people. And he's also very nice himself. He's very kind and considerate. Um, I really like his character, honestly. I think he's super cool um, and definitely worth rooting for. Then we have ourselves, oh man, her name is uh, hard for me to say. It's Fuyutsuki. Uh, Fuyutsuki, she's uh, also a kind of a calm, cool, collected kind of girl. Uh, a lot of people say that she's kind of aloof uh, and stuff like that, but she's really focused. She really loves helping people and really cares about the people who care about her. Um, she's an awesome character. I mean, she's also easily rooted for <laughs> sorry i had like a hard time trying to think of what i was trying to say yeah easy to root for she's super cool i didn't um and yeah i just really like her character she's really awesome um and i like their dynamic together i think the characters are great uh how push this story forward of a pretty simple um office rom-com so like i mentioned this is an office rom-com and uh yeah it's about him struggling like with uh, trying to show his feelings in a way, uh, he'll, you know, freeze himself, he'll do, like, all these other things, oh, he'll cause it to snow if he's feeling a certain way, so... It's about him trying to open up and become, uh, more, like, sociable and also, like, trying to, um, ask this girl out. Uh, but yeah, he's super adorable, he's super cute, she's awesome, and, um, yeah, uh, it's, that's basically the story <laughs> in a nutshell, is uh, it's just a rom-com about them doing rom com -y things, so... Uh, overall, yeah, I, I mean, it's a very basic story, but I think it helps get the job done, um, and I really do like it, actually. And coming into the art, uh, the art is also very good. We get a lot of really funny, like, moments. Um, I really actually do like the massive amount of different areas we get, a lot of different compositions. They do travel a lot in this one. In this one volume, we get, like, um... I believe it's Hawaii, I want to say, uh, or somewhere like tropical, and as well as like other city areas, a lot of snow stuff. Yeah, the art is great. I think it really is probably the best part of this entire volume. So yeah, if you're a big fan of rom-com stuff, if you're a big fan of like just office theme, I guess, <laughs> I would say give this a shot. I think it's worth a read. Uh, I know it also had an anime recently that a lot of people seem to like. So uh, yeah, I would say you could do like kind of like a dual watch slash read party and you'll probably enjoy yourself uh either way but yeah this is a good first volume all right coming into the ranking so this is gonna be interesting because um i feel like one of these is very different so it's kind of hard uh to rank it specifically um i will say that betwixt is my favorite out of the four uh, but I don't think it is fair to rate it among the other three because it is a compilation manga. So, like, um, there obviously was a higher chance and a lot of short stories. Uh, so we get, like, a variety, uh, of course. And I typically love compilation stuff. Uh, so Betwixt is going to be my number one regardless. Uh, so I'm just going to put it right over here. But to rank the, one, the volume one specifically, um, this is an interesting one. Because I actually really like, I really like two of them and I like one of them. So... Um, I think I'm gonna put Ice Guy and Cool Girl at the bottom, just because it's like, it's pretty simple, uh, I, it's not like my favorite thing in the world, um, but I, I think it's still worth a read. Um, now between Tokyo Babylon and Bochi the Rock, they are very, very different, so this is kind of hard, um, just in general, they're very incomparable in my opinion, but I think I'm gonna say... Bochi the Rock is probably my favorite between the two of them. I, I do like Tokyo Babylon, but there are there is like one thing I would say that's a little problematic about it that it's just not my thing, and that's like the age gap uh, joke relationship thing uh, that they keep joking about. It's just not my favorite thing, uh, but it's not that much of a problem yet. Uh, so that's like the only thing that's keeping it from being in the top spot for the volume ones. Uh, Bochi the Rock is going to take that. But like I said, if I include Betwixt, Betwixt is definitely my number one for this month. So, here we are. There is the ranking. Here are the four in a semi-split manner because they are too big to put in frame alone. So, yeah. Have you read any of these four volumes? What do you feel about them? Have you watched the anime for them? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate... I would really like to see, like, what... Uh, people think about these because these are all very, very different, like I mentioned. <laughs> uh, different, so different, in fact, that, like, it's not, it's not really fair to rate them among amongst one another, but this is part of my FBI process. This is what I do, uh, and it's just opinionated, so, I mean, 
you take that as you will. However, let me know how you feel about any of these in the comments below, like I mentioned, and you know what to do. Uh, you can like, you could comment, you could subscribe. Uh, those are all amazing things. I really appreciate it when you do those things. Uh, we are rushing towards 2,000 subscribers at a much faster pace than I was expecting, so thank you for all the support on all of the videos. I really appreciate it. You guys are all awesome. You're all amazing. And yeah, that's going to be it for this FVI. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Uh,